All right. The June session of the Special Magistrate for Code Enforcement is now in session. Uh, for those of you who may be unfamiliar with the process, I will explain to you uh, what we do here. Uh, I've been appointed by the city to serve as Special Magistrate, uh, in effect judge, to sit and hear uh, cases that have been brought before me either through the city's issuing a notice of violation or for any other reason that some applicant feels that they need a hearing uh, before me. And so my role today really is to decide the facts and if there are any penalties to impose what those penalties may be. We have three cases on the agenda today. The first case is case CE18 hyphen 001326. The respondent is CKS Oviedo Properties LLC. The property involved is 312 and 360 Allen Avenue in Oviedo. Uh, the parcel numbers are 16-21-31-300-010. Uh, uh, dash 0000 and the second partial is 16-21-31-300-010 uh, dash 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 g dash 0000 uh, who's going to be presenting this case for the city all right so two people all right would you would both of you step to the microphone please You raise your right hand. Do you solemnly affirm that the testimony you're going to give today shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes, I do. And for the record, uh, we have uh, Mr. Orioles. State your full name in. Jim Orioles, Code Enforcement Inspector. And ma'am? Amanda Bauman, Fire Inspector. Amanda, spell that last name, Amanda. Bauman, B A U M A. N -N. All right. All right. Who else is here today to speak to this item? Anyone else in the audience here to speak today? All right. If you're going to speak, step forward if you would. I see two other gentlemen with you. Are they going to speak today? No, sir. My name is Chris Schultz, representing CKS. Okay. What is the name again? Chris Schultz, S C H U L T Z. Would you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. All right. We'll start with the city. Who's going to make the presentation for the city? Sir, we're going to make a, a joint presentation. I will present the um, first five pages, the, the notice of hearing and the uh, proof of delivery for the notice of hearing. Inspector Bauman will present the technical data from the inspections, all the inspections that were done since that's within her technical expertise, not mine. All right. Go ahead. Uh, case number 18-001326, as Your Honor has mentioned, um, 312 and 360 Allen Avenue. Um, if I may, Your Honor, I have five pages to present of evidence to present to Your Honor. All right. Have you shown a copy to the respondent? All right. Let me see that. Right, that will be admitted in evidence as the city's uh, Exhibit A. The first document, Your Honor, is notice of hearing um, to CKS Oviedo Properties. The next item is the certified mail receipt showing proof of mailing. The next copy is an affidavit of hand delivery that Inspector Bauman hand delivered the notice of hearing on June 18, 2018, and the respond. And the respondent is, is here this morning, Your Honor. All right. Anything further from you, Mr.? No, sir. Mr. Orioles? All right. Ms. Bauman? I have 28 pages of um, information that I'd like to hand in evidence, if we can approach. Yes. Again, has a copy been provided to the respondent? Yes, sir. Okay. If not, you can come save me. 
Um, on the first page, just, just wait, wait one moment, please. Sorry. All right, it will be admitted in evidence as the city's uh, exhibit B. All right, go ahead, Ms. Bowman. All right, on the first page, it lists out all the dates that I've tried to make communication. On the 22nd of June 2017, an initial fire inspection was conducted. Jim Fabrio um, was noticed and he signed for the violations. Um, he was also given the documentation. On the 22nd, I also notified the building official and code enforcement of the work that was done without permits that I had found. Um, the third page starts the violation report. Following that are the pictures that I had taken during the inspection. Um, on August 4th, I received an email from Jimbo stating that violations were corrected. Which page are you on now? Um, I was just going down the list, I'm sorry. Uh, the page 15. I apologize. All right, give me a moment to get there. Is this the one that has the top re CKS, page one of one? It should have um, Friday, August 4th. It's an email. Step forward and let me see what you're looking at. Yes. Okay. All right, go ahead. Um, the top email states that they wanted to check in just that they had fixed some of the violations and they had started receiving quotes for the fire sprinkler work that needed to be done. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, on pay, the following page are more emails that go back and forth between Jimbo and I regarding coming out to verify some of the inspections on August 7th. On August 7th, I went out to verify some of the violations had been corrected. They still had not completed all of them or had gotten permits for the work that was done without a permit. On August 18th, the following page, which would be page 17, I received an email from the fire marshal that she had spoken with the building official and that they had determined work needed to, uh, permit needed to be done for the work that had been conducted. Um, I had no correspondence from CKS from August 18th to the 27th. Um, the following email from August 28th, Jimbo sent me an email asking for a 30-day extension to pull the permits. I granted them the 30-day extension. Uh, the following, I think it's page 20. There is an actual permit application that CKS applied for on August or September 28th, 2017. On the permit application that he applied for, application 1771669, the description of work that was stated was at interior walls with acoustical ceiling, inside warehouse area. Work was completed years ago. Fire inspectors requiring we obtain a retroactive permit along with permitting for fire sprinkler, et cetera, and that was signed by the owner, Chris Schultz. Um, we reviewed the, the permit and it was denied on October 10th. The building department had sent comments out on October 19th, 2017. Uh, page 23 shows the comments that were sent out. Why was the permit denied? The permit was denied because they did not show the exact work that was done. I actually printed out the comments. All right. I denied the permit at the time. A complete plan review cannot be conducted. There was a conference room that was added and it was not shown on the plan. Um, I asked for them to show the conference room as well as the electrical and mechanical components that were added and they never replied with anything. All right. When, when did you last inspect the premises? The last time I have physically been on the property was October 7, 2017. Has
class at that time, what violations still existed? At that time, I still had Page three starts the actual inspection violation. I had sprinkler okay, system. Slow down. Let me stay with you. I'm sorry. I speak Page what? Page three starts the notice violations. Is this the page you're talking yes, about? Yes, sir. All right. At the time, I still had fire sprinkler systems. Tags were not present. The building disconnect had not been labeled. Sprinkler systems were still not inspected, and the last inspection was done in 2010. There were still ceiling tiles missing, emergency lights that had not worked, electrical panel was not properly labeled. They still had the permits outstanding for the work that was done. Um, the backflow had still not been secured. The fire alarm room was not labeled. Discussion plates were still missing. There was improper uses of surge protectors, fire alarm. Logbook was not on site. Exit signs needed to be removed and insufficient sprinkler head coverage. Okay. Why have you not inspected since October 7th? That was the last time that I went out and I was trying to get them to go out to start getting the work without permit because the biggest issue is the walls and the sprinkler head coverage that's not provided in those rooms. I've tried making contact multiple times with Jimbo, Angela, and a new gentleman by the name of Tyler and have not gotten a response from anybody. Okay. And as far as you know, the problem with the permit, I want to make sure I understand that, that was a failure to have obtained a permit at the time work was done? And they did the work without a permit without the city knowing. And they is, also... Is a permit going to be required to correct any of the violations you have in your list? Yes, sir. Have they applied for a permit? They applied for one, but they have never received the permit. They never came through with the corrections to get a permit. And the permit has now since expired. The other issue that we have is we have a life safety issue due to the sprinkler heads not being below the ceiling in the conference room or in the warehouse area that they created offices. All right. Well, let's take these one at a time. I want to know what is a life safety issue. The life uh, safety issue that they have is the fire sprinkler heads that are installed in the warehouse are set as an upright head, so they only spray above okay, the ceiling. Let me take them one at a time here. Let's go through them. I see uh, fire sprinkler system tags are present, no inspection tags present. That's a violation? Correct. There's, the way our, our system puts it out is it asks for if the tags are present, we say yes or no, and when it prints it out, it'll say that the tags are there. And then my comment below, note, no inspection tags are present. All right. So I said your last inspection, no, in no inspection tag was present. Correct. And that's for the fire sprinkler system. Yes, sir. All right. The next one says repair the wall around the door in the design area to the electric room. Correct. And I put an OK with my initials and the date that was corrected. So this has been corrected? Yes, sir. All right. The next one um, requires disconnect shall be clearly, properly labeled. And your note says, unable to determine which system this disconnect operates, clearly labeled the shunt trip and disconnects on outside of building, warehouse building label main disconnect on outside of building. Have those, as have your last inspection, been corrected? No, sir. Is that a life safety issue? It is. The wall around the door, uh, going back one, is that a life safety issue? No, sir. All right, the next page it says, uh, with respect to the fire sprinkler standpipe systems, uh, it says main office building, unknown date of last annual inspection warehouse, last inspection was 2010. Uh, what is the problem there? The issue here is that the, the fire sprinkler systems themselves have not been inspected by a fire sprinkler licensed contractor to verify that the systems are operational and are working in 100 percent. Is that a requirement of the National Fire Code? Yes, sir. 
quarterly inspections are also required, and that was not being done. All right. Is that a life safety issue? Yes, sir. All right. The next one, improper storage of propane cylinders. Propane cylinders larger than one pound shall be stored outside. What was the situation that you found on October 7th? They had a 20-pound cylinder inside, but that has been since corrected. So this is corrected? Yes, sir. All right, the next item, missing damaged ceiling tile. The note is replace the damaged and missing ceiling tile in the copy area and in the design offices. Has that been corrected? To my knowledge, it has not. Is that a life safety issue? Yes, sir. Why is that? Due to the ceiling tiles being in place, it keeps the heat below the ceiling so the fire sprinkler heads can activate at the proper temperature. With the ceiling tiles missing, the heat will actually go past the sprinkler heads and they will not operate as supposed to. All right. Next item, emergency lights provided and maintained. It says emergency light in design area not operating on backup battery and in main office. Has that been corrected? I'm not sure. Is that a life safety issue? Yes, sir. Next item, electrical room and panel shall be properly labeled. I see the note, label the electrical room door in the design area as electrical room. Has that been corrected? Not to my knowledge. Is that a life safety issue? No, sir. All right, the next item is other flammable uh, combustible materials, hazmat deficiencies. And your note is warehouse, label the double doors by the fuel tanks, emergency fuel shut off outside. Has that been corrected? Yes, sir. And I see there a handwritten note. Okay. Is that your initials? Yes. So that indicates that has been. Yes, sir. Okay. And the next item, uh, provide breaker lock, provide fire alarm break lock. I see your initials, so that's been corrected. Yes, sir. What sort of business is conducted in, this, in these two buildings? I believe CKS is a masonry company. Masonry, All right. All right, going to the next page. Work without permit. The addition of the break room and the conference room uh, were done without the permit. Is that the permit problem? Yes, sir. Uh, what's going to be required to correct that? They need to obtain a building permit for the work that has been done for the drywall, the electrical, and the mechanical work. And following that, they will have to obtain a fire sprinkler permit to lower the sprinkler heads below the ceiling. So they need a permit for the drywall, the electrical? And mechanical. And this will be a retroactive permit? Yes, sir. Uh, the fact that the work's been done without a permit, does that affect in any way the ability of the city to inspect the work? It does. They've not applied for that permit yet? They applied, but it was rejected, and they have not come back in with the corrections. Why was it uh, rejected? I rejected it for the permit that they had submitted with us, the floor plan. They only showed the big, off, the big conference room area. They did not show the small conference room, the electrical work, or the mechanical work. They just drew like a box. So insufficient detail. Yes, sir. All right, next item says other sprinkler standpipe pipe system deficiencies. In your note, it says provide chain and lock to secure the handle of the backflow preventer. Riser shall have new insulation wrapped around pipe to prevent freezing. Has that been corrected? Not to my knowledge. Is that a life safety issue? The chain and lock on the backflow preventer is, yes. And why is that? It, can, it prevents tampering of the backflow. You are, you're unable to shut down the water supply system or the sprinkler system unless you remove the chain and lock. <clears throat> All right. Next item says 
FAC fire riser room labeled. And uh, the note is labeled room where the fire alarm panel is FACP room and electrical room. You need to explain that to me. The FACP stands for fire alarm control panel. It's where we know that the fire alarm system is being housed. If we don't know where that's at, we're unable to locate it and verify that there's any troubles or any alarms on the panel. All right. And has that been corrected? Not to my knowledge. Next, uh, uh, scotch and plates are all present in your note missing. A scotch and plate in front of the conference room door in the design area, closet in Angela's office, missing. A scotch and plate in the main office closet. These are scotch and plates for what? For electrical outlets? For the fire sprinkler heads. There are those silver rings that go around the heads. It's a whole UL assembly that have to be on there. Has that been corrected? Not to my knowledge. Is that a fire safety issue? Yes, sir. Uh, I should have said, is that a life safety issue? Yes, sir. Next, it says extension cord in lieu of permanent wiring. In the note, remove the orange code running through the wall to a plug. The electrical cord shall not run through walls. Remove gray cord to computer. You're going to need to explain that one. Well, it's been corrected, apparently. They removed both the orange extension cord through the wall and the gray cord to the computer. So, But it is corrected. Yes, sir. Right. Now, it says permit required, and I see a note now, uh, Land Development Code Section 3.4A1. Uh, permit shall be required for fire sprinkler work and possible work without a permit. Explain what the problem is there. The fire sprinkler work that needs to be done are the heads that need to be lowered in the areas that they did without the permit. And then I put possible work without a permit because I try to research before I mandate that they need to get a permit. That's why I put possible. And then I did find out it was work without a permit and the building official is requiring a permit. So that's not been done? No, sir. All right, next page. Um, missing FDC cap on backflow preventer. Provide FDC sign on white background with red letters. Uh, I see your initials there. That's apparently been corrected. Yes, sir. Then next, improper use of surge protector. And the note is uh, HR, I guess Human Resources. Yes, sir. Human Resources Office. Remove the battery backup from the surge protector and just use the battery backup. Replace surge protector to battery backup with a battery backup with longer cord. Explain what the problem is there. The problem is when you start adding surge protectors to surge protectors, it's piggybacking or daisy chaining. You, per the UL listing of the surge protectors, they're not to be tied together. And people use them as extension cords instead of just using the one with the proper length of a cord. Is that a life safety issue? Yes, it can be. The next item, fire alarm logbook not on site. And then a note, last fire alarm inspection was 2010. Last service or repair was in 2015. Uh, why is the logbook book necessary? The logbook's necessary so we know when the alarm panel is being worked on or when the alarm is being inspected. It keeps track of who's been there and who's done what. All right. And uh, has that uh, condition been corrected? Not to my knowledge. <clears throat> Next, uh, exit signs provided and maintained. And your note is remove the exit signs going back into the big break area and storage area. You're going to need to explain that to me. The exit signs that are above the door are leading them away from the exit to get out of the building. So in a situation of emergency, the exits are taking them in an area of a danger, not taking them out of the building where they need to be. Has that been correct? Not to my knowledge. Is that a life safety issue? Yes, sir. Next, insufficient sprinkler head coverage. Uh, note, no fire sprinkler coverage below the ceiling in the big break area in the conference room downstairs. Uh, that means there's no no sprinkler coverage in that area? Correct. Has that been corrected? No, sir. Is that a fire, a life safety issue? Absolutely. 
All right. We've covered now all the uh, deficiencies that you found. Yes, sir. Let's go through some of the photographs so that I understand those. Just start with the top photograph, which is this one in my stack at least. Yes. And tell me what what that depicts. So there's two. The, the second picture behind that one is the whole break room of the large area that they created down in their warehouse. It's, so the two of these together? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's from wall to wall. That's the area that was done, one of the areas that was done without a permit that also has no sprinkler coverage below. You can see that there's no heads up in the ceiling. <clears throat> That's the break room. Yes, sir. Is that the only deficiency in the break room is the lack of the permit? In the break room, yes, and then the sprinkler head coverage. All right. What's the next one I see is, is this one. It's a darker picture for you, but yes, there's a stairwell. I can bring this up if you would like me to if you want to see it. Yes, please. Yeah, that's a little better picture. Actually, let me trade photographs with you. Okay, tell me what the problem with the stairwell is. This was me standing in that large break room looking up towards the door. The ceiling does not continue all the way through. The walls actually kind of stop behind that picture as well. So the ceiling doesn't continue up the stairway. No, well. sir. All right. And what about this next photograph? Which is, mine's just as dark, but it's looking from the stairwell up into the ceiling from that same area. It's looking from the stairwell back toward the break room? Yes, sir. Okay. What problem does that show? You can look up into the ceiling and see that there's no, it wasn't done. No ceiling perfectly. tile? Correct. All right. Next next uh, photograph that is the conference room that they also constructed without a permit and you can also see that there's no sprinkler head coverage and no sprinkler head you say no sir Last photo. The last photo, I was just standing in the warehouse area looking up towards the ceiling. Just to, I was taking it to show the building official what was going on, so that way you can just see how they were constructing the walls and supporting the walls. Okay. All right. To come into compliance, other than correcting the specific things that have not been corrected and obtaining a permit to do the work, what else would be necessary? Obtain the permit, get the inspections, approved inspections, and that would be it. All right. Anything else you have to present? No, sir. All right. Who wants to speak? Uh, Mr. Schultz? Good morning again, sir. All right. Uh, give, me your, give me your view. Okay. Um, just starting from the beginning, I've owned the building since 2004. It's got a couple thousand square feet up front. That was always re that was always office space. The downstairs warehouse part that she's referring to is about, I think it's 6,000 square feet, and it was just a warehouse. Um, it's all fire sprinklered, and the people prior to me were making uh, computer chips, uh, et cetera. So it was all fire sprinklered. Over the years, just would grow. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Okay. Over the years, uh, we've just grown and we yes we did build interior walls down down there we built a, a conference room and, and, and what you would call like a break room the break room's got ping pong tables in it and um, treadmills and bikes for people while they're working it consists of about three walls for the whole thing and on both of those areas we did we did put a ceiling and we did did some interior walls and we did not drop the fire sprinkler system down so incorrect on our end, and I don't have an excuse for any of that. Um, so if I stop there a second, so when this all came up, we did we tried to work with Amanda, correct? Um, 
we got some things going, and you can see that the kind of last correspondence with her was last year on 8-7-17. On the list that I have, the same list I think you just went over, we have rectified 98% of everything, which were mainly the things that she spoke about with labels and signs and this. What I find you know, ironic is that these exit signs were there prior to me getting there. I haven't changed any exit signs, so over the course of the years, I don't know what's changed that made them wrong or right. Um, but we were happy to comply with the signs and the labeling, and I think we've completed all that. When we went to try to get the building um, uh, permit to make some changes, when they denied it, it stopped everything with the fire sprinkler system. So the fire sprinkler uh, wanes automatic, I think they call it. They couldn't pursue anything more of dropping down these sprinkler heads and trying to work through the, the aspect of trying to get a permit for the building or for the walls that I built. Since that time, I think it's more adequate to just remove the walls and then that erases everything from the building side, I think. They're just interior walls. If I tear them down, then I should not have an issue with the building department. And I think it also fixes the issue with the fire sprinkler because now I have the same fire sprinkler system that was there since 2004. And I don't know if I'm correct or incorrect on this. Um, we haven't had any more correspondence with her. We're happy to work with the city and get compliant with the things we did. And that's what I thought was a good idea. Okay, let's go through some of these items. Do you have the list in front of you? I think I have the same list as you, sir. Okay. Um, the no inspection tags present, has that been corrected? Uh, I don't know on that one. Okay. The uh, improper opening in the wall, to repair the wall around the door. And to our knowledge, what she means is a piece of wood that was rotted in an area of the building that we have fixed. I, we think it's this big. I don't really have great clarity. She has a picture of a door going into an electrical room. And I, I didn't know that she, she commented about anything about the electrical room. We haven't changed anything with the electrical in the building at all. There's nothing that, 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 that we've changed except those three interior walls that we did add and we put receptacles in them. But in this specific one, has that wall around the door been repaired? Yes, yes sir. It's a piece of trim underneath the door when you walk in. I'm, I, if I'm understanding, she's already wrote okay on this. If we're on, on the okay, so yes. she's already agreed to that. Yeah. The next one, uh, unable to determine which system this disconnect operates. Clearly labeled the shunt trip and disconnects from outside of building, warehouse building label main disconnect on outside of building. Has that been corrected? Sir, I don't have any idea what she means. And I've asked a couple of people she's talked to, and they don't have any clarity either. All right. Ms. Bauman, could you step to the microphone and explain what you mean there? You can stay out there, Ms. Yeah, Ms. Mr. Shields. Yes, sir. Thank you. The pictures that were provided show the electrical disconnects on the outside of the building. Those are what need to be labeled. Okay. Well, this is on the outside of the building by a parking lot? Correct. Okay. Everything was labeled, but this box right here, everything's got a name on it. It says power that, that whatever. At the time that I was there for the inspection, there was no labels, or otherwise I would not have noted it. Okay, so I don't understand what you want by the label. There, there's a power box that says, like, you know, Bright House or Progress Energy. What is it? And this big box right here has some kind of a black power cord that's there prior to me being there. I don't even know what it is. If it's a building shutoff, that's all I'm asking is to label it building disconnect, if that's for what it is fire. for power. But for fire, we have to know that's the shutoff if your building's on fire, how to shut your building down. That's why for I labeled that. For a water side or a power side? For a power side. Okay. I think I all right. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Bellman. All right. One thing I want to uh, uh, sort of correct uh, right away, Mr. Schultz. Uh, you said several times this is the way the building was when we found it. Yes. Uh, that is not a legal excuse. Sure, I understand. Uh, the, the occupant of the building has to make sure it complies with the code. Sir, no I matter what it looked like when they got I, it. I agree with you. Okay. I, we're right, let's, let's look at the next one. Uh, this would be the next page. Main office building, unknown date, last inspection. Last inspection was 2010. Has there been an inspection uh, since 2010? I don't know. 
Uh, when we started the process back in last year of trying to retain Wayne Automatic to start the, the process, when the permit was de denied here, they said they're not doing anything. Okay, and then the next one, propane cylinder, what she said, that's been corrected. Uh, then uh, replace the damaged and missing ceiling tile in the copy area and the design offices. Has that been corrected? Yes, there was water intrusion from the hurricane, and we fixed it. Right next, uh, emergency light in design area not operating on backup power in the main backup battery in the main office. Has that been corrected? Yes. Then uh, next, label the electrical room door in the design area as an electrical room. Has that been corrected? Yes. Uh, next, warehouse, label the double doors by the fuel tanks, emergency fuel shutoff. That, well, she says that's corrected. So yes. let's go on to the next page. The uh, work without a permit, I assume that uh, other than the one permit that was rejected, no other permits have been pulled? Correct. Okay. Then uh, the next one, provide chain and lock to secure the handles on the back flow preventer. Has that been corrected? Yes. Uh, riser shall have new installation wrapped around pipe to prevent freezing. Has that been corrected? I have a question on that one. I'm not sure what that is. Is that the pipe outside on the outside of the building, the big red pipe? Have you seen that the insulation was installed there? Have you been back out there to look? I have not been back out there. I looked at it high. this morning. It's got a, um, a black Foam. styrofoam thing from top to bottom. All right. Uh, the next item is a label room with a fire alarm panel is a FACP room and electric room. Has that been corrected? Sir, which one are you on again? Is it the 2-4? This is the third one on the panel. Fire riser room? Yeah, fire riser room labeled. Okay. Um, no, it's not done, and we had a question. Label room or the fire room? So that's not corrected. No, nope. and we just need some clarification from her what it is that we're doing. What's that? So we need some clarification of what it is that we need to be doing. Is there like a, right. a tag on it that we're supposed to okay. acquire? Ms. Bowman, would you explain what's needed there? I need that room to say FACP or fire alarm room. Is that so a you tag? You can get a sticker. sticker. You can paint it on. However, I just need it to say FACP. Or fire alarm. So a fire sprinkler company would, would know all about this stuff? They should, yes. Okay. So Your fire alarm company should also do it or know about it. Okay. Okay, next uh, item, escutcheon plates. Missing escutcheon plate in the front conference room in the design area, closet in Angela's office. Missing escutcheon plate in the main office. Have those been corrected? Yes. Next, permanent extension cord in lieu of permanent wiring. Uh, well, she says that's been corrected. Uh, permit, let's go to the next page. The second item, Mr. Schultz. Yes, sir. Improper use of surge protectors. Has that been corrected? Yes. Um, then uh, the next last fire alarm inspection was 210, last service repair was in 2015. Uh, have there been any uh, inspections or repairs since 2015? Not to my knowledge. Uh, next, exit signs provided and maintained. Uh, has that been corrected? That's the exit sign going We think we have them all right, yes. What's that? We think we have them all corrected, yes, from, from their conversation with her from last year. To my knowledge, the, the bulk of the issue was some of them, the light wasn't on, so and there was one here there that she wanted. Or we so had you think the exit signs going back into the, bed, the big break area, storage area, have been yes. changed? Okay. And then the insufficient sprinkler head coverage, no fire sprinkler coverage below the ceiling in the big break. Has that been corrected? No, it has a ceiling. And that the, the fire sprinklers are up in the... In the, in the attic above the ceiling. yes right if I took out the ceilings that I installed and the walls I installed I'm assuming I'm in compliant all right all right anything else you want to present no Mr. sir all right anything mr. Baum miss Bauman you want to present 
No, so there really isn't anything else. I just wanted to state that they've never asked me for clarification on anything and correspondence didn't end on October or August 7th of 17. There's been emails that went all the way to May 24th of this year. And no, none of his employees have asked for clarification on any of the violations. All right. So that's it. All right. I'm going to find that there are numerous uh, violations. Um, and some seem to have been corrected. Some may have been corrected. Some we don't know whether they've been corrected. Uh, the ones that concern me most are the life safety issues, obviously. Uh, I don't want to be in a position of uh, not doing my job today and having that building burn down and a bunch of people die in a month uh, from now. Uh, so we are going to require some corrections. Uh, we know uh, for certain that no inspection tags uh, are present, so I'm going to order that corrected. Uh, we uh, pretty clear that the uh, building disconnect is not clearly properly labeled. That's the fourth item on the first page. That certainly needs to be corrected. That's a life safety issue. Um, on, the, on the second page of uh, Ms. Bauman's report, main uh, office building unknown date of last inspection warehouse last inspection. I'm going to require that an up-to-date inspection be obtained and documented. Um, the next item, replace the damage and missing ceiling tile in the copy areas in the design offices. It's not clear to me that's been corrected. If it has not, I'm going to order that to be corrected. Uh, next item, emergency light and design area not operating on backup battery in, in main office. Uh, again, uh, there's some question as to whether it's been corrected. Uh, if it's not been corrected, I'm going to require that be corrected. Next item, the label the electrical room door in the design area as electrical room. It appears it may be corrected. If not, again, I'm going to order that corrected. Uh, the other, uh, next one, wirehouse label the double doors by the fuel tanks. Well, that one has been corrected. Uh, the next one after that, I find, has been corrected. Next page, the work permit. I am going to require that a sufficient work permit be obtained uh, for all work, whether retroactive or current. Uh, I say current, I mean new. The next item, provide chain and lock uh, to secure the handles on the backflow preventer. The riser shall have new insulation wrapped around the pipe to prevent freezing. There seems to be some question whether both those have been completed. We're going to order those to be completed and corrected if they've not already been. Uh, next item, the uh, fire riser room labeling. Uh, label room with a fire alarm panel is FACP room and electrical room. Uh, I find uh, that that has not been corrected and we going to order it corrected. The escutcheon plates in the conference room door in the design area, closet in Angela's office, and the missing escutcheon plate in the main closet uh, seem maybe to have been corrected, but the event they have not, I'm going to order those corrected. Uh, extension cord, that's been corrected. Um, uh, then permits shall be required for fire sprinkler work and possible work without a permit. I'm going to require that a permit, a uh, sufficient permit, be obtained for that. Uh, the last page, uh, the Second item, improper use of surge protector. Uh, the Human Resources Office removed the battery backup from the surge protector and just used the battery backup. 
Replace surge protector to battery backup with a backup with a battery backup with a longer cord. Uh, that seems to have been corrected, but in the event it has not, or to the extent it has not, I'm going to order it cor corrected. The fire alarm logbook not on site, uh, and the f last fire alarm inspection was 2010. Last fire service 2015. I find, based on the testimony of both Ms. Bauman and Mr. Schultz, that that has not been accomplished. I'm going to order that condition corrected. Uh, next, remove the exit signs going back into the big break room and storage area. To the extent that's not been corrected, I'm going to order it corrected. And the insufficient sprinkler head coverage certainly is a life safety issue. Um, that, I find, based on the testimony of both witnesses, has not been uh, done. I'm going to order that condition corrected. I'm going to order all corrections to be uh, all permits required to be obtained within thirty days. Well, say to be a, all permits to be applied for within thirty days. And all corrective action to be completed within 60 days. And that's 60 days of today's date. Uh, should um, the permits not be re applied for within 30 days, fines will be uh, will begin to accrue on the 31st day at uh, $100 per day. If all corrective action is not completed within 60 days, a fine of $100 per day. Actually, it's going uh, to be $150 a day because some of these are life safety issues. Fines will then begin to accrue at the rate of uh, on the 61st first day fines will begin to accrue at $150 a day. So any reason that uh, Ms. Bauman, Mr. Schultz, you don't think that uh, those deadlines can be met, if you know of some reason, you need to tell me now. Yes, sir. Mr. Schultz, come forward. Uh, yes, re sir. Referring to applying for a permit within 30 days, I think is reasonable. But once the, once the permit application gets to the city of Oviedo, I don't have any control of how long it takes them to say yes. And so I, I'm, I'm at a standstill at the mercy of you guys. Uh, what, what do I do? Right. And then I, once the time I get the permit, yeah, I think within, within 60 days it's perfectly normal to get these things done. All right. Uh, then the corrective action shall be completed within 60 days of permit issuance. Yes, sir. And then 60 days thereafter, if... Uh, any of the work, I mean, even one item is not completed, but then fine shall accrue at $150 a day. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Bauman, unless you need to hang around, you're, you're free to go. I just want to say one thing. I just spoke with the fire marshal, and we're okay if they want to pull a separate fire sprinkler permit to get that work going now while we're working on the work without permit for the construction. All right. You have... Okay, that'd be good. All right, that concludes that item. Thank you, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda. <clears throat> is case CE 18-000596 and case CE 18-000597. Um, uh, this case, uh, the property is at 262 and 282 North Central Avenue, Oviedo, Florida. There are actually two adjacent parcels. Uh, the ID number for the first parcel is 10-21-31. Uh, 
uh, hyphen 506 hyphen 0000 hyphen 0060 the parcel ID for the second uh, parcel is 10 dash 21 dash 31 dash 506 dash 0000 dash 0070 and the alleged violation here is a violation of land development code section 3 3.4 uh, clearing grading and tree removal without pulling a permit who's going to be speaking to uh, uh, this case I will your honor Who else is going to be speaking to this case? All right, state your full name, please, sir, slowly. Yes, sir, go ahead. William Panora. William? Panora. Spell the last name. P-A-N-O-R-A. -A. All right, would you both raise your right hand? You solemnly affirm the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Yeah. All right, Mr. Panora, we'll hear first from Mr. Orioles, and then you'll have an opportunity. Mr. Orioles. Your Honor, I have 43 pages of evidence I would like to present you, to Your you Honor. You may have a seat, Mr. Pernor. Make yourself comfortable. If I may approach? Yes, you may. If Your Honor will remember at the last... Well, uh, th these have also been shown to the respondents. Yes, sir, the respondents have copies right, of all of going to admit these into evidence as uh, the city's uh, Exhibit A. All right, go ahead, Mr. Orioles. If Your Honor remembers the last meeting, we uh, presented the ownership, property ownership and the uh, violation codes, and we postponed 30 days so that the Panoras would have time to address some of the issues before they came before Your Honor. Yes, I remember that. Um, Your Honor, the first four pictures I have put in, in there, in your packet, it's just a historical reference. This is what the property looked like, as you can see, in 2013, 2014. Um, I'm very familiar with that property. I drive by it every day. Okay. <laughs> All right. The next two pictures, or I'm sorry, three pictures, Your Honor, is what it looks like now. And if you're familiar with it, you, you know what it looks like now. This kind of all of a sudden happened. We didn't, we didn't know it was a, it was a laydown yard for the, for the contractor who was doing the road widening on Central Boulevard. It was with permission from the city. He had to put all of his equipment on the <coughs> front portion of, of the property. Um, when he left, Lo and behold, he left the property in that condition. We didn't know that it was going to be cleared and graded. We do require a clearing and grading permit for such work. Um, I neglected to uh, state that I do have with me today Ben Williams, who is an engineering specialist and engineering inspector, who is familiar with the site and he's familiar with the requirements of the site and, and some of the history of the work that was done on the site. Uh, my fault, Your Honor, I apologize. If you would like to swear uh, Mr. Williams in, you will probably have some things to add to on this case as well. All right, fine. Mr. Williams, would you state your full name? Benjamin J. Williams. Benjamin and Williams, just as it sounds. Yes, just as it sounds. All right, would you raise your right hand? You solemnly affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. All right, Mr. Orioles, go ahead. Okay. We noticed on 320, as, you, as the pictures I showed, Your Honor, we, we first noticed on 320 that this lot had been completely cleared. Um, that was 320 of this year? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes. yes, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> the bald head should be a giveaway. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. I look in the mirror every day. I see it. <laughs> um, Your Honor, since these are consolidated cases, I have I have presented together, I'm presenting this case together, and I've, no, I've attached the notices all together for, for both 262 and 282. So the first, the first two is the notice of violation that was originally sent to, to the Panoras. Uh, we have historically in the past, and we 
laughed about it at a meeting yesterday with the Panoras, have been unable to get in touch with them many times. Uh, we do have now have uh, an address where we can get, get in touch with them. Um, you see the receipt of mailing in the next document. However, we never got a green card back um, from that. We sent a second notice of violation. We posted City Hall, and we posted the property so we would get legal service on the property. And Your Honor can find, after the two notices of violation, second notice of violation, there's aff two affidavits of service for each, for each piece of property um, saying that we did post the property, post the city hall, and sent first class to the address shown in the property appraisers uh, parcel, uh, getting service of the notices. All right. I'm going to find as a threshold matter that all notices have been uh, provided as required by statute and ordinance. Uh, and I also note that the re respondents are present today, uh, both in person and by representative. All right. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the next two pictures on the 416, which was the date that, that we had required the uh, Panoras to either get a permit or to restore the, the property to its previous state. And as you can see, nothing was done to the property. Let me slow down there. Which one? Okay. Okay. The two pictures that were taken on 416. Right. Hold those up for me so I can get on the same page with you. Oh, th those are the first ones. Those are early in the package? No, sir. They're, they're after the, uh, should be after the affidavit of service. Okay, 416. I see them, okay? Explain what, you, what your point on that one. Uh, just to show that nothing has, no, nothing has been done to correct the problem and nothing has been done to, to try to get a clearing or grading permit. What can be done to correct this problem? Mr. Williams is better uh, able to answer that than I, okay. but um, the one thing they need to, they will have to do is to get a clearing grading permit. Uh, their needs, uh, um, there will be pictures later on coming that will show your honor, I believe that there's immediate needs to do erosion control. And uh, Mr. Williams can better state than I uh, if, the, if the grade of the property has been changed significantly enough to where it needs to be changed or not. Right. The, grade, the grade of the property was definitely changed. But we don't, it's, it's hard, since we didn't have the opportunity to inspect beforehand, it's, hard, it's very hard to tell, you know, how much of it has changed. And further on, I have pictures and aerials showing, Your Honor, uh, they'll make some of that a lot clearer. Um, when, you know, the city initially gave per permission to the contractor on that on the road project yes, to use the front part of the property? Yes, sir. And that was the part that was essentially treeless? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, and, and you never gave any permission to remove the trees in the back part of the property? No, sir. Now, the back part, of the, let's see, the, the parcels run uh, north and south here, don't they? They run east and west. East and west. Yes, so sir. the front is is both parcels. Yes, sir. Both. both both parcels face Central Avenue. Yeah, okay. So, so the they're front they're part of each parcel was yeah. essentially treeless Correct. before condition. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, the next document you have is, is affidavit of violation and then notices of hearing for both um, properties. And you have a bevy of certified mailings since Ms. Paganio in an attempt to get service mailed a bunch of them off. Um, I am in the wrong, I'm sorry, I am in the wrong order. Then we have the last meeting where Your Honor extended for, for 30 days. We had for both parcels again, she mailed that finding a fact with and have green cards from two green cards this time. We go from none to none. She also took it upon herself to email the lady who was with Mr. Panora at the last meeting to assure her that she would be in attendance at this meeting. We have that email with us as well. So just in case they didn't come up, but as it's a moot point as they are now here. Okay. The last pictures, Your Honor, will see um, were taken this morning. And if Your Honor goes by there every day, you notice that there's nothing been done on the property. I would like to um, show you the last pictures. Is 
Dave, 628? Yes, sir. Uh, you can see, I'm, I'm sorry, you can see that the erosion is continuing um, and it's getting worse. Now, that's, that's along Central, I mean along Franklin Avenue, those last two pictures. Uh, with, with each day's rain, the, the erosion gets worse. Uh, the property backs up to Sweetwater Creek, which is a, a wetland area. So we, we believe that we need to uh, have some erosion control on that. Now, if you, if you would like Mr. Williams to come forward to give yes, his, lend, lend his expertise. Yeah. Uh, and just for the record, uh, I do notice uh, uh, two people that I assume to be uh, Lewis and Soila Panora in the back. Okay, I, I just want to, the record to reflect their presence. Okay, Mr. Williams, what can we do to correct this problem? Uh, in order to correct this erosion issue that we have, uh, permanent erosion control methods need to be established, okay. which mean grassing the area, basically. Um, Any, anything else? Yes. Uh, right now, there is currently a uh, erosion control issue out there uh, to where the uh, property is eroding, uh, the silt is eroding, going to the lowest point, and then proceeding to the back, which the property historically drained to anyway. But before the, uh, the elevation change of the property, it was more of a gradual slope of sheet flow of basically flat land. Now the water is being channeled basically to the sides, and hence is what Mr. Orioles is talking about, to where we have the erosion control issue. So the silt will need to be pulled back onto the property. Um, the dirt will need, be, be, need to be pulled and removed um, out of the undisturbed area. With that back, we'll call it the back 40 of that property. And until permanent erosion control is established, some kind of turf, uh, St. Augustine, I mean, excuse me, uh, just Bahia, uh, silt fence would need to be uh, installed basically uh, um, from the disturbed area forward along the sides up to uh, reasonably up to the sidewalk so that uh, the silt, if any other erosion, uh, any other erosion occurs, is, um, it stays on the property. So the silt fence would have to be around the complete property or just the like sides and back? Like the horseshoe, yes. The sides and back. Sides Three and back. sides, yes. And that would be temporary? That would be temporary until the permanent erosion control turf has, um, been established and uh, you know the city of Oviedo is uh, responsible for making sure these types of things happen as per our MS4 permit so uh, this is what we need to do okay anything else no sir all right Mr. Oil some questions for you yes, I sir. noticed that at one time this property had a for sale sign on it yes what sir. is this property zoned uh, zoned office commercial I believe what? Uh, William, it's office commercial. It's owned office commercial. There were one Do we time know whether any there sales were, are in the in the works on this property, Mr. Bernard? Any sales? We're working on okay. We did discover at one at one point about 18 years ago there was plans to put an Italian restaurant there, <laughs> but it never but it never followed through. That's we, what we need in Avitas, more restaurants. <laughs> right. Okay, anything else, Mr. Orioles? No, sir. Yes, All right, sir. Mr. Penora, your turn. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Um, yes, currently we're trying to see what options we have with the property we are planning on neither developing it ourselves um, or selling it depending on um, the situation. Um, from, <clears throat> from our understanding, we feel a little victimized from, from the situation that happened. We 
had the property with grass normal for many years. Uh, one day, Messi, right, the company, Messi came up to us stating that we work for the city of Oviedo. And since we want to be in good graces with Oviedo because we plan on developing in the future. Who was it that came up? What company? Messi. Messi Construction. Spell that for me. M A S S E Y. Massey. Oh, Massey. Massey, no. M A S C I. M A S C I. M A S C I. And they work for the uh, Department of Transportation. They're the contractors for the Department of Transportation. They were contractors for the Department of Transportation. Yeah. I know how that works. All right. Go ahead, Mr. And Hill. so a gentleman approached my father and um, uh, told them that if, if they were able to park their equipment there, and since we wanted to be in good graces, we, uh, we told them, talk, you, you know, you guys represent or are part of the city. Um, we just don't want to get in trouble afterwards. Do what you need to do. We didn't accept any kind of payments or nothing like that. Just, we, we just did it from, you know, in good graces. Uh, they said in order for them to park their equipment, they would have to clear some land. We said, do what you have to do, but make sure you do it with the city. I, we don't want any kind of trouble afterwards. And they said that we would be there for about a year. And 18 months passed, and then they left after 18 months, not a year. And as soon as they left, we get a letter from the city of Oviedo saying that we violated um, the land. So we feel a little victimized because for 18 months, the city of Oviedo hasn't said anything. And as soon as the contractors leave, we are in violation, my father and I. And um, it was mostly grass. We are willing to to do what needs to be done. You know, we, we're not here to start any kind of trouble. Uh, we've planted seeds for the grass to, to, to come back. Um, maybe the rain washed it out. We don't know. We're, we're going to plant a lot more. Uh, as for the silt, if I need to hire a you know, a professional company to do that. We are we are willing to do that. Since then, since the 30-day extension, we have called Messi, which I talked to the gentleman yesterday, we have called Messi numerous of times. They no longer answer our phone calls. I feel like they already know all our numbers, and so they decide to ignore. We have sent, um, well, we, I've been told yesterday that we can send certified to their business. So we are in the process of going to send them a certified letter to the, the principal um, of the business. Um, we are trying to do what we can do. But from our side, we're willing to do the grass and we're willing to do the, the silt fencing. Um, and. I think that's okay. basically what, what, what I got. You had no written contract with Massey? We, we have a contract. Massey? Yes. yes. Let, me, let, me, let me read it, sir. And on the contract, it says that it would be um, taken care of the, the property and put back in order if they are out of order and on the contract and that's why we've called Messi numerous times but I assume this is a contract that was prepared by Massey. I think my father and a friend, they did it, and, and Massey read it and agreed. But who, who wrote it? 
I think my father and his his um, I, he has a real estate friend that helped him write it. Okay. Well, let me tell you what bothers me about this, mm -hmm. Mr. Panora. Says in lieu of monthly rental payment, Massey agrees to clear the land to the wetland to the east and stabilize the site. That appears to me like uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Panora and you to the extent that you had an interest in that property yeah. knew in advance that this property was going to be clear and instead of a rental payment Massey was obligated to clear that land for yeah. you that bothers me they said they needed more space for their equipment mm -hmm. and we said do what you want to do as long as it's okay with yeah. well, the city but they said that they represent you know the city because they're constructed on 436 and yesterday I was told that 436 is not the city I I'm, I'm a, you know I'm a citizen I don't know what what roads belong to who okay well you you, you understand though what I'm saying it appears I, I to me that you ask them to clear it well back to the wetlands because they said they needed yeah. space for their equipment and they used mm -hmm. all of that space okay. they had numerous trucks and numerous big big heavy-duty equipment there all right, Mr. Orioles, you have something to add? Yes, sir. In, in the first group of pictures, there's two pictures, and I have them. I can, I can show them to your honor. You have them in your packet. Well, let me see those, and it'll, it'll simplify it. It shows the aerial, aerial photo of the property, the properties in 2009, just here. And this is 2000. I'm sorry, I got it backwards. You got it backwards, yes. It was heavily treated property. And this is 2018. Mm -hmm. um, most of the trees that were on the property were not um, trees that we would require permits for. They were mostly camphor trees and different like that. We're not, we're not uh, complaining actually about the tree removal. Okay. All right, Ed. All right, Let's speak into the microphone. But is it the city's contention that uh, by clearing this land, they have created an irreversible? Uh, condition. Um, That's an important issue in this case. Ben, you can answer that better than I. No, I would not not say it was an irreversible condition. All right, because were it irreversible, you know, the fine would be $5,000 per lot. I would not say it's irreversible. Okay. Um, they, uh, the, the biggest issue here is they need to obtain a clearing grading permit to establish the correct elevation which I could not tell you right now. And number two is to stop the erosion issue that's going on right now, which can be stopped. And remove any material that's come to, to the back into the Right. And like I said before, number three, and remove some of the silt that is eroded into the uh, unimproved, the uncleared area, back, back out of there, and establish erosion control with turf. So that would be bringing the silt from the east back onto the property. Yes, sir. They have not cleared into any wetlands. What's that? They have not cleared into any wetlands or anything like that, because I keep hearing okay. that word. And the temporary silt fence. Silt fence, yes. Uh, is seeding going to work on this, or is it going to I, I think I think it's too flat. The way it's graded right now, uh, with a hard rainstorm, the seed's just going to wash away. Hence is the need for actual turf. The hay sod? Yes, sir. All right. Anything else, Mr. Williams? No, sir. Mr. Panora, anything else? Uh, we'll give this back yeah, to you. Yes, uh, sir. Would, I would you? suggest to you, sir, that, you know, I can't give you legal advice, but if you don't get any uh, uh, response from Massa, you might want to see an attorney. Uh, my only question was grass. I what what do you mean by a s sod? What sod? Uh, it's, uh, the proper term for it is turf, but it's, it's grass, like uh, bahia, like the squares on a pallet. Yeah. yeah. All right, go ahead, Mr. Bernard. I, I don't have 
the the money to to put uh, it it's a lot of dirt uh you know one piece of sod costs how much two dollars and to put it on i mean i i i would love to put seeds i mean i and i and i will continue until it grows but i cannot afford to put sod that And sir, it it is growing. It it, it the grass is growing. That's what I do. Give me one second. May I approach for a second to show you something? Sure. There's central there. So this has been elevated. This is Franklin. This is Franklin, yes, sir. So this has been elevated. Uh, so that's what's causing the erosion issue. Once it gets to the sides, it's it's gaining it's energy. Eroding toward Franklin. It's it's eroding toward Franklin and it's going back. Everything historically flows back. It's going south and east. South and east. So if if they could sod the sides all the way up to the plateau part of this property, so to speak, on both sides and on the back, and then reseed the middle that would work as well because they're just establishing erosion control on the on the what slopes. What you're recommending is sod on the south? I'm recommending sod on the south slope up to the top where it flattens out. Sod on the east because there's a slope back there up to where it flattens out and then sod on the north side up to where it flattens out and then they can seed the area in here if sodding the entire area is too much because it is a lot but it has to be maintained so what you're suggesting is sod on the east on the south and the north to the top of the slope Yes. How much area is that going to cover? How many square foot feet are we talking about? It, it would it probably cut their turf requirement in half. Okay. And see the rest, I assume. And could I approach? Could I? Yes, sir. Oh, this was taken in March, as as you can see, and as you can see, the grass is already growing. So it, it's it's working. It's just gonna take a little bit. Yeah. Well, I see that. I also see uh, a, a definite erosion. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anything else? Right, Ed. I must say, at first, I was inclined to be more lenient than I became as time went on during this hearing. Uh, certainly, if you had made this available free to Massey, um, uh, and uh, if they had done this without this clearing without your permission, uh, then uh, I would have been more inclined to be lenient. But it, it, is, it seems clear to me that this property was for sale even before uh, Massey uh, approached you. And it also seems from the rental agreement that you had with Massey that, that the respondents took the opportunity to have this lot cleared by Massey. Uh, so I, I view uh, the respondents as being uh, certainly equally responsible for Massey. With, with Massey for creating the condition that now exists. And regardless of who created it, it's going to have to be uh, uh, corrected. Uh, uh, it may be that you have some 
some remedy against Massey, but that's something you'll have to pursue. Uh, in, the, in the meantime, I am going to first find that all the notices that are requ required by statute and ordinance have been given. I'm going to require the respondents uh, to obtain uh, within 30 days to obtain a clearing and grading permit for this lot. I am going to require the within that same 30 days the installation of a uh, uh, temporary silt fence to prevent further erosion back into the wetlands and onto the roadways. I'm uh, going to require that uh, as part of the uh, uh, excavation and grading that the, the silt that has uh, resulted from the runoff from the erosion back into the east be pulled back up onto the property. I'm going to require that Bahia sod be installed on the south, east, and north slopes of the property up to a point where the slope fat flattens out. Uh, the remainder can be seeded, but uh, the sod, it seems, is necessary to keep the erosion from continuing. Uh, going to require all work to be done within uh, 60 days of the permit issuance should the work not be completed within 60 days of the permit issuance then a fine will be will accrue uh, on the 61st day at the rate of $100 per day un until the property is brought into compliance uh, so that is my ruling. I'll be issuing a written order to that effect, which will be mailed to you. Thank you. All right. The next item Your Honor, on. Your Honor, just to wrap that up quickly, that $100 per day, is that per parcel? Um, yes, per parcel. Yes, that, that didn't even clarify. Yeah. That, you understand that, Mr. Penora, that $100 a day would be for each parcel? After the permit after the, after the 60 days, yes, sir. Next item on the agenda is case CE 17-002385, um, the property is 123 East High Street, Oviedo, Florida, 32765, parcel ID is 15-21-31-517-0000-0080, uh, its evidence is to be presented by the city. Uh, this is a uh, property that we've had hearings on in January and uh, March, I think. So uh, who's going to be appearing today? Who's going to be speaking to this? Mr. Yeah. Orioles, are you going to be speaking also? Yes, sir. Jim Orioles, Code Enforcement okay. Officer. All right. And what is your name, ma'am? My name is Erica Glasgow, and I'm appearing on behalf of Spell you, the first name. E-R-I-C-A. My last name is G-L-A-S-G-O-W. G-L-A-S? G-O-W. Like the city, Glasgow. G-L-A-S-G-O. G-O-W. G-O-W. Glasgow, if you were in Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, would you both raise your right hand? Yeah. You solemnly affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. All right. Who, sit, Mr. Oyles, you... Yes, sir. Go first. I have 11 pages of evidence if I'd like to present to yes, Your Honor. Yes, please. And this has been shown to Ms. Glasgow. All right. I'm going to be a, uh, Your Honor, the, the reason we're here today is because... City's Exhibit A. I'm sorry. 
The reason we're here today is there was a clerical error on my part at the last hearing. Um, the uh, respondent was not properly notified, as I had testified it was. It was an error on my part, a clerical error. I just saw too many green cards. And I, when it was, as soon as it was brought up to me, uh, I'm not sure if it was Ms. Glasgow or not, but um, we decided to give them an opportunity to have a hearing this morning. That, that should have been, been last month. Last year month. was a Massey hearing, as I recall. Yes, sir. So that's all. That's all. That's the only thing we're going to do is the Massey hearing. On um, March 22nd, Your Honor found that the property was in noncompliance and assessed a fine of uh, $100 a day for 32 days, um, which came out to $6,400, I believe. Yeah, it was $6,400 up to that time. 6400 yes. Yeah, up until the date of that year. Yes, sir. Um, on a routine inspection, of, we weren't looking for the property. We weren't notified that the property had come into compliance. But on a routine inspection, we noticed that the property was, in fact, in compliance, and we stopped the fine on April 24th. We reported to Your Honor at the next Massey hearing, which, which was on May 24th, that there was – property was in compliance. Your Honor did not assess any extra fine. Oh, I'm like, did you say May or March? May. Okay, the last hearing was March 22. Yes, sir. Okay, and at that time, that was the hearing for which there was uh, inadequate notice? No, sir. There was adequate notice for that hearing. Okay. Was, was there a hearing after that? Yes, sir. When, when was the next hearing? May 24th. Okay. Let me make sure I've got that here. So there have been three hearings on this. It's in your packet. There's been yeah, 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 at least three. April 24th, the property had come into compliance. Correct. Let me read this. So it was the May 24th hearing that was had inadequate notice. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. At that time, Your Honor, um, Your Honor did not assess any additional fine on the property, kept the original fine and ordered to be paid by June the 25th, which, of course, it could not be because the respondent was not notified. And the respondent is here today to answer the uh, to come for the Massey hearing that they should have been allowed to have on May the 24th. Yeah. Let me get my bearings here. So the, and by my January order, there was a February 16 data compliance. That date was not met, so on March, they were still in violation. At that time, I had posed a fine. Six thousand four hundred dollars. Correct. Well, 
with fines beginning to run thereafter at $100 a day. was then in May. On April 24th, we filed, we filed a, a notice of compliance to stop, to stop the $100 day fine. So at the May hearing, we waived any fines after March 22. but rule that the respondent was still responsible for the $6,400 imposed for the March order. All right, and that, the May was the Massey hearing. Correct, sir. All right, so what the respondent's representative wants to do today is revisit the Massey issue. Correct, sir. Okay. Now, now I'm on the same wavelength with you. Mr. Glasgow, do you have anything else, Mr. Orioles? No, sir. All right, Mr. Glasgow. So, Your Honor, the only thing that we're interested in, we have brought the property into compliance, and the bank has spent a considerable amount of money, I guess, since they've owned it. It looks like close Speak to... Speak into the microphone there. Sure. <laughs> close to 29000 if I'm correct, $323.70 since they've owned the property, trying to bring it into compliance with various issues. Um, we're just asking for the city's standard reduction of the fee, if at all possible, if you give consideration to that, given the efforts we have put forward to bring it into compliance. Yeah. Uh, well, give me a reason why I should reduce the fine. Well, you know, in speaking with the code enforcement officer, I'm not sure. There, there have been a number of things that they've been doing. They've been out to the property, um, and I can go back from January. It looks like they've been consistently putting forth effort to try to bring the property into compliance. Um, in speaking with the code enforcement officer, he said between March and, I guess, the time that the property was brought into compliance, no one put him on notice, I guess, as to when the compliance took place. But I know that they were consistently putting forth effort. And maybe, and, and I can't say this with certainty, but maybe the property were in a little bit more of compliance before the 24th, but I just don't know that they were put on notice to go out to the property to observe that. Well, let me review this. It looks like the initial hearing was in January, and I'm sure that uh, the U.S. Bank received a copy of my January order. And as I recall, in January, Certainly, the bank was on notice at that point in time that there were deficiencies to be corrected, and they were specifically enumerated in that order, rotten and missing soffits, missing doors, screens on the screen pool enclosure, damaged fishing, uh, fencing, damaged roof, damaged exterior walls, swimming pool, although mostly drained, still has a stagnant pond at the bottom. It is subject to partially refilling after rainfall. So... That was January 22. They were given until February 17 to correct that condition, and that time was relatively short because the swimming pool was involved. Right. And uh, I assume you're a representative of U.S. Bank today. I'm appearing on their behalf. I'm yes. actually covering the case for another firm, but yes. Yeah, well, uh, a perpetual problem we have and for, for me, you know, I, I, I get weary of seeing them, is banks will foreclose on a property and then let it go to pot. Um, that's bad enough. But swimming pools, when you have defense that can, children can get through, you have screening, screening that is torn and the children can get through, and you have stagnant water, poses a horrible threat to the, to the life of children. As an attorney, I have sat through so many cases over the years of drowned children in stagnant pools that I, uh, I tend to take a very dim view. So here the bank, between January 25 and February 17, failed to correct the conditions. Certainly they had notice of that. Then in the March order came along. So as of March 22, 
they still were stagnant water in the pool. No repairs had been formed on the roof or soffits. The stagnant water in the pool continued to pose a hazard. So at that time, uh, I uh, imposed a fine of $6,400, and I assume that order was sent to, to the bank. So certainly at that time, they were on notice. Um, so, you, you know, and, and the bank never, never bothered to send a representative to any one of these hearings. It's as if they didn't care. So I'm not inclined to reduce the fine. Uh, in fact, uh, today I'm going to, since this is really a, a massive hearing today, I'm going to uh, reaffirm the $6,400 fine. I would suggest, Ms. Glasgow, that you, you tell the bank that, you know, these swimming pools are nothing. They ought to know. They have legal representation, surely. And I'm sure some attorney who specializes in bodily injury and personal and, and, bot and death have told them that, you know, if a, if a child drowns in this pool, the $6,400 fine is not even going to pay your attorney for the initial consult. So, uh, no, I'm not going to reduce the fine. And I wish you'd convey to the bank that if they're going to foreclose properties in the city, they better make darn sure that the pools at least stay in good condition. Because okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not going, I'm not going to exercise any leniency. Okay. Okay. I Thank will you, certainly convey that. No problem. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. I know you're just. I, I know you're just the uh, the person <laughs> they sent here to 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 get the bad news. But I hope you'll convey it to them. I definitely will. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. All right, any other cases to come before us today? All right, we are adjourned.